I cannot adequately or accurately divine the full meaning of the bonds between my sire and myself. Not even to myself, for my own satisfaction, can I pull the threads of the tie between us apart, examine and analyze them, describe them in words that are safe and painless. The strength of that bond is such that it transcends the descriptive capacity of language. Words alone cannot convey it. But because I am who I am, I must try. Does it matter how we first met, who I was, and who he was, at that long ago time? Does it matter where we were, and the words we said to one another, and the language that we spoke? I do not think it does. That place no longer exists in any way that matters. Its villages are buried rubble, its people scattered and lost in the great sea of humanity, its language forgotten before it could be written. What were we? What are we? To each other? Perhaps the more important question. He was not, was never, my lover though I know that many of the ancients took their child for the sake of pure lust, out of a desire born in blood. That was not the way between he and I. Our bond is deeper than any tie that arises from transient desire, infatuation with a pretty face or a sweet voice. In fact, I do not know all the reasons why he first chose me, and I do not think that I want to know them. Some things, even between oneself and one's sire, are better left unexplored. I know that he made the decision for the first time when I was little more than a child, and that he held to it as I grew to manhood. Unlike many of his child, he offered me a true choice when the time came. Not the dead water or death, as so many of our kin do in these degenerate nights but the gift of his blood, or the right to live and die as a mortal. A life in which he would not interfere. Why did I choose as I did? I could offer a thousand facile rationalizations of my choice, but all of them would be just that. Rationalizations. Self-justification coated in layers of pride and regret. I will say instead, only this. When I made my choice of my own free will, and knowing what I would both gain and lose by doing so, I believed that it was the right choice to make, the right way, the path that I had been born to follow. Was I wrong about that choice, or was I right? Even I do not know any longer. I'm not entirely certain that I care any longer. It has been too long since I made that choice. The reasons no longer matter, and the consequences are ceasing to matter as well. There are those who say that I am my sire's first chosen and favorite. They are only partially correct. The pride of place for the first chosen rightfully belongs to an elder brother, whose name is now all but forgotten, and whose line has so dwindled that if it contained a dozen childer, I would be surprised indeed. But favorite? Yes, I was that. I say it and claim the truth of it, without pride and without pleasure. My sire loves me. Not as a man loves his lover, but as a father loves his son. You cannot imagine how terrifying that is. How heavy a weight it hangs upon my shoulders. To know that in me resides the sum of my sire's remaining humanity. The remnants of his ability to feel and comprehend human emotion. The womb of his rebirth as a thing only barely human any longer. 
it is almost true that he cannot die. So long as one of his blood exists, he exists. So long as the world does not fall to ash, he may make himself whole again. It happened once. His flesh perished, but his essence lived on. Lived on and found purchase within me to remake itself. I felt both things almost at once. The shock of his death rippling through the blood in my veins. And the second greater shock of his life quickening within the blood he had given me. Within my very flesh. I felt him reshape me to host himself, building a nest within me of blood and soft tissue to cradle a tiny seed of recovering consciousness. I felt him grow slowly as he drew the scattered pieces of himself, the fragments of his identity, back together again, growing stronger and more coherent as the weeks stretched into months. Nine months. Of course, nine, the number it takes to create the miracle of new life. My belly swelled with him and within myself. I felt him move. I felt him caress me from within, lovingly, trusting me in his vulnerability as he trusted no one and nothing else. Even his bogatiered witch warriors... I knew how a woman must feel as her babe grew beneath her heart, and it nearly drove me mad to discover that same depth of love within myself for my sire, whose soul I carried within me, whose blood and flesh were as much my own as his. He birthed himself on a moonless night as my body contorted with the demands he made on it, yielding flesh and blood as he required. I know there was pain, but the pain is not the most intense memory I have of that night. Rather, it was laying there afterwards, panting and as exhausted as any woman who had birthed her first child, with him laying on my hollowed-out belly, small and red and wrinkled. He mewled hungrily, as any infant would. And I took him in my arms, gave him suck from my own throat, and when I looked into his eyes I saw that his efforts to recreate himself had failed. There was nothing human in his eyes. I had birthed a monster whom I could not even strangle in the cradle, whom I could not even expose for the sun to burn to ash and the wind to scatter. Blood had passed between us for months. Nine months! The time needed to make miracles. And the bond between us was tight. I'd loved the monstrous thing I'd birthed as much as I loved the scholar who had fed my mind, the seer who had advised me with wise counsel, the sire who had let me find my own way as he had found his. The horror of it choked me, and I could not even flee it. Instead, I took him back to the place that he had claimed as his own, and gave him to the care of those who could care for him, and then I ran from the sight of him and the knowledge of what had become of him, and built myself a home across the deep salt sea where I hoped to escape the pull of him, the desire to return to him. I threw myself into esoteric studies and then into the arms of my lovers, in hopes of building something better than I had first given birth to. In all of these things, I failed. Greetings, one and all. If you enjoyed that, you can support me on my Discord, Patreon. Redbubble, or with a channel membership, or simply like, comment, and subscribe to catch any and all future DQVO videos. And as always, my thanks for watching.